richly pieced, cased elaborately. A richly priestly, a rich priestly cased, elaborated the ritual and the theology and fitted together into a pantheon the several divinities of the component parts of the empire. Through association with the government, the gods also became associated with mortality. Lawgivers received their codes from a god, thus each, thus a breach of law became an impiety. The oldest legal codes still known is that of Hammurabi, king of Babylon, around about 2100 BC. This code was asserted by the king to have been delivered to him by Marduk. The connection between religion and mortality became continually closer throughout ancient times. This code was the connection between religion and mortality. Morality became continually closer throughout ancient times. Babylonian religion, unlike that of Egypt, was more concerned with prospect in this world than with happiness in the next. Magic, divination, and astrology, though not particular to Babylonia, were the most developed there than anywhere else, and it was chiefly through Babylon that they acquired their hold on later antiquity. From Babylon come things, some things that belong to science. The division of the day into 24 hours, the circle into 360 degrees, also discovery of a circle in eclipses, which enabled lunar eclipses to be predicated with certain, predicted with certainty, and solar eclipses with some probability. This Babylonian knowledge, as we shall see, was acquired by Thales. The civilization of Egypt and Mesopotamia were agricultural, and those of surrounding nations at first were pastoral. A new element came with the development of commerce, which at first was entirely maritime. Weapons in, uh, until about 1000 BC were made of bronze, and nations which did not have the necessary metals to uh, their own territory were obliged to obtain them by trade or piracy. Piracy was a temporary expedient and where social and political conditions were fairly stable. Commerce was found to be more profitable. In Commerce, the island of Crete seems to have been the pioneer. For about 11th century, say from 2500 BC to 1400 BC, an aristocratically advanced culture called the Minoanian existed in Crete. What survives of Cretan art gives an impression of cheerfulness and almost decadent luxury, very different from the terrifying gloom of Egyptian temples. Of this important civilization, almost nothing was known until the excavation of Sir Arthur Evans and others. It was a maritime civilization in close touch with Egypt, except during the time of the Hyksos. From Egyptian pictures, it is evident that there were that the very considerable commerce between Egypt and Crete was carried on by Cretan sailors. This commerce reached its maximum about 1,500 BC. The Cretan religion appears to have been to have had many affinities with the religions of Syria and Asia Minor, but in the art. But in art, there were there was more affinity with Egypt. Though Cretan art was very original and amazingly full of life, the centre, the sant of Cretan civilization, was so called a pa was called called Palace of Minos. It was the so called Palace of Minos at Knossos, which memories lingered in the traditions of classical Greece. The palaces of Crete were very magnificent, but they would but were destroyed about the end of the 14th century BC, probably by invaders 
from Greece. The chronolog chronology of Cretan history is derived from Egyptian objects found in Crete and Cretan objects found in Egypt. Throughout all knowledge is dependent on archaeological evidence. The Cretans worshipped a goddess, or perhaps several goddesses. The most indubitable goddess was mistress was the mistress of animals, who was a huntress, and probably the source of classical Artemis. Footnote. She had a male twin or consort, master of animals, but he is less prominent. It was a later date that Artemis was identified with Greek mother of Asia Minor. End of footnote. She or another was also a mother uh, in the only male deity apart from the master of animals in her young son. There is some evidence of the belief in an afterlife in which as Egyptian <coughs> belief uh, deeds on earth received reward or retribution. But on the whole, the Cretans appear from their art to have been cheerful people, not so much pressed by gloomy superstitions. They were fond of bullfights at which the female as well as the male toreadors performed amazing acrobatic feats. The bullfights were religious celebrations, and Sir Arthur Evans thinks that the performers belonged to the highest nobility. The surviving pictures are full of movement and realism.